Hey, Kindle, it's Ty Cohen here from KindleCashflow.com, and today I want to talk to you about something a little bit different, right? It is not directly, um, doesn't directly involve Kindle publishing, but it does speak to something that um, can kind of make or break your success as a Kindle publisher or uh, as someone that's looking to just get more visibility, that's looking to sell more books, that's looking to get more readers, that's just looking to be out there in general. And you know, I, I see that a lot of people make this one mistake and either they're totally unaware of the fact that they're making it and they make it repeatedly, day in and day out, day in and day out, even when they're not writing, even when they're not publishing books to Kindle. They're making this mistake day in and day out when you're talking to their family, when they're talking to uh, people at their workplace, when they're talking to their children, when they're most importantly talking to themselves. And that is something that I think based on, you know, a few things, it could be a cultural thing. It could be uh, the way that you've been raised. It could be. Uh, your expectations for yourself. It could be just a really total limiting belief. And that is, you know, how do you feel about money? Right? How do you feel about money? Because sometimes we we say one thing and we really feel a totally different way. So I'll give you an example, right? So I was talking to someone that's in one of my high-end masterminds, a Kindle publishing mastermind that I have. Um, and this individual... I'm going to say that his name is Jerry, right, just to uh, just to kind of keep his identity safe. But Jerry is telling me, you know, he says, in one conversation, Ty, you know, I can't wait to sell a ton of books. I can't wait to reach the masses. I can't wait to make X number of dollars a month. And then just... A few days later, in another conversation, he's telling me that, you know, based off of his religion, you know, uh, money is not something that's really important. Money is not something, and this could be anything. In Jerry's case, it just happens to be that based off of his religion and the teachings of his religion, it could be anything. Like I said, it could be based off of the way that you were brought up, right? Based off of your personal expectations, based off of things that you've experienced in your life. But for Jerry, he was saying that based off of his religion and what he believed, people who uh, were rich were basically kind of bad people, people who kind of strided to to, to, uh, do a little bit better than most were kind of uh, bad people. Um, And these are his words, not mine, right? I'm just relaying the message and just repeating what I kind of got from him. And that it was kind of noble to be poor. And that's, it's a total contradiction, you know? Uh, Sometimes we, again, we'll say that we want one thing, and then our belief is the total opposite. So I'm asking you today, so just examine your beliefs, and I want you to take it a step further. Examine where did you get that belief from, right? I want you to think about what is it that you ultimately want Is it to sell more books? Is it to um, become a a more recognized name in the publishing space? Is it to make money, which is fine? And then why do you want to do that? So, for example, I'll use myself as an example, right? So, my since I ever since I was like 15, right? I grew up in a very modest household, um, very poor neighborhood. We were a very poor family. my mom had several kids, and my dad worked multiple jobs, but he worked multiple blue-collar jobs, and my, my mom and dad were separated. So although my dad would always give my mom money, right, it was limited in the amount that he could give us. He worked at any one time. He worked three different blue-collar jobs. Was, his main job was a construction worker, where he usually worked about 8 to 10 hours a day. Then he would work as a taxi driver and then as a security guard part-time. 
Um, and that was to support our family. And again, we lived off of very modest means. There were maybe about five or six of us uh, in the household. So my desire was always to make money and to have enough money when I got older to number one, move my family out of the hood, to move my family out of the ghetto. And number two, to make sure that um, I was able to take my mom to different heights, meaning to expose her to things that she would not have been able to see on her own, right? To be able to take her on trips, to be able to um, have her enjoy foods and just some of the simple things that we take for granted. But some of the things that I knew that based on her mindset and her expectations and her self-belief, she was not going to be able to accomplish on her own, right? And I've been able to do that. So sometimes, you know, and then later in life, my mom developed cancer. So being able to help her with medical bills and, and hospital care and all that other stuff, right, that comes along with that. So sometimes, you know, we have to look at money in a different way. We look at it from the standpoint of, not just wanting it for selfish reasons, not just wanting it for the material stuff that you can buy, like the houses, the cars, the jewelry, whatever it may be, trips, but also looking at it from a standpoint of who can I truly help if I have more money, right? I've been on both sides. I've been on the super poor side and I've been on the side where I've had some money, right? And it is a lot better on this side because I'm able to donate significant amounts of money to charities that I'm passionate about. I'm able to help my mom, right? I'm able to help other family members. And I'm able to do that without sacrificing my quality of life and my family's quality of life. And I'm also, I've been able to to kind of break that cycle of poverty that my family has lived through for generations. So for me, that is highly satisfactory, satisfactory, right? So yeah, I know this is a little bit of a longer uh, episode, but I really felt like I should share this with a lot of people because there's so many of us that are holding ourselves back based off of our beliefs. And then we never question where we initially got those beliefs and why we even think that way. So I want you to think, where did you get those beliefs? What can you do to change them? And how are they kind of holding you back, all right? So let me know, what are some of your thoughts on what I covered here? Uh, And also, I'd love to hear what are some of your negative and limiting beliefs that you have, have, and uh, I'll see you on the next episode. Remember, Ty Collins from KindleCashflow.com, the quickest and easiest way to get started with Amazon Kindle Publishing. Let me know what you would like me to cover in a future episode, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this episode I know it was a little bit different, but if you'd like me to to talk about stuff like this, like mindset and stuff that goes along with the goal setting, absolutely let me know and I will do so. I'm out.